Hey everyone, Live It Like Lisa here. Well, it didn't take me long. I've just done my first project with my Cricut Joy and I am so happy with the way it's turned out. So what I'll be showing you in this video is how I made my theatre room sign. So this is going to be the sign above the door to the theatre room. So what I'm doing first, I've got a thin sheet of plywood and I am painting it in a beige colour. Now this is the colour that I want the letters to be of the theatre sign. So we're going to be using the Cricut Joy almost like a stencil, not using it as a sticker to stick on the sign, but more like a stencil. And I'll show you the method that I use shortly. So what you want to do is if you're going to be doing this sign, we're going to be, you paint the, the base colour, the colour that you want your letters to be. So this colour I chose is like a, a, I think it's called a linen beige. It's just leftover paint from a previous project that I did. So I gave it a couple of coats so that it's nice evenly coated. And now I'm just going to measure the actual width of the sign just so I can get an idea of what size I want the font to be. So for this particular sign, I was going for roughly about 10 centimetres tall. Um, is probably about the maximum font size that I want to do. So I've jumped onto Design Space, which is the program that you use to design your images that you want to either print or cut using your Cricut. Now, bear in mind, I have never ever used Design Space before. I don't have any experience using Design Space, so I don't know a lot of the tips, tricks, and features and everything yet. But as an absolute beginner, not knowing anything, I found it fairly easy to do what I needed to do. It's pretty simple. If you've done any sort of Word document or anything like that, it's very similar set out to that where you can pick your fonts, change your font size. Uh, it's got options to add images and that sort of thing. So I'm basically just going through and trying to pick a font type that I like. You can subscribe to design space and that will enable you to have access to all of the content that is on design space. If you don't subscribe then you're just limited to what is available under the free option and I'm just resizing it and getting an idea of what I want it to look like basically. Um, just having a play around with different fonts, different sizes and like I said it's very easy. You don't need an instruction book. You can just sort of have a look at the buttons and <laughs> play around with it. I, I found it fairly easy and I'm not necessarily technically minded. So now the only real snag that I came across when trying to do my sign was the fact that I didn't have vinyl that was long enough for the sign. So you can buy vinyl that is about six meters long because the Cricut Joy will print images that are 11 centimeters wide up to six meters long. So normally this sign would be no problem. But because I only had the small sheets of vinyl, I had to sort of chop my word up into say three letters at a time and just cut those letters on the vinyl that I had available. So I made it work. It would have probably been a hell of a lot easier had I had the right size vinyl, but um, yeah, it still worked all the same. But I have since learned that all of that chopping up the letter wasn't even necessary because the Cricut Joy actually does all that for you. I just didn't notice it on the left hand side here where it shows you how it's going to cut your words. It will actually tell you, you put in the size of the vinyl that you have and it will actually put in how many sheets of vinyl you need and work out where the letters need to be on those sheets. So yeah, at the <laughs> it, it's all a learning experience for me. And like I said, I still made it work doing my method, but obviously Cricut Joy has thought of all of that as well. And ha they already have the options for you to cut it if you don't have the correct size vinyl, if you've only got shorter sheets of vinyl. So yeah, like I said, I'm still learning, but we got there in the end. So now we're ready to cut. I'm going to load my vinyl. So I'm using some vinyl colors that I don't think I would actually normally use because these, like I said, I'm just going to be using this vinyl 
as a stencil so it's actually going to be tossed once I finish the project so I didn't want to use colors that I think I might use in the future like blacks whites and reds um, I just picked this coral color because I'm I don't have any sort of projects in mind using the coral color at this stage I'm just showing you here hopefully you can see it in the light the, the letters that are cut out on the vinyl and now I'm just going to do the next set of letters but like I said once I've learned this step wasn't necessary the Cricut Joy would have done all this for me had I have just looked over to the left hand side and saw all the options available but you live and you learn and these are the things that you learn <laughs> so learn by my mistake <laughs> All right, so now that I've got all my letters cut, what I'm going to do now is remove all the excess vinyl from the backing sheet. And then we're going to transfer these letters onto the wood. So um, you can see I'm very inexperienced in removing the backing tape. Oh, wow. I probably should have edited that and made it look a lot more professional, but... <laughs> This is real. This is raw. This is me learning on camera. So yeah, I'm doing it to both of the um, both of the set of letters, so that then I can space them out on the sign and get an idea of where I want them to sit and make sure that I've got it fairly even on both sides of the sign. And I'm just weeding out all the excess um, vinyl. In between all the letters as well and this comes off really easy just peel it off okay so what I'm doing now is using the transfer tape I'm just cutting a piece off to fit the size of uh, the letter piece that I have there and this transfer tape is reusable so you can use it more than once I think it remains fairly sticky as long as you replace the the backing of it each time after you've used it so here I'm just using the scraper tool from the Cricut toolkit and this you just rub this all over your letters to make sure that they are adhered to your transfer tape because now we're going to peel away that backing and hopefully hopefully all of those letters will be stuck now to the clear contact transfer tape. Okay, so now I'm going to stick the contact tape onto my piece of wood where I want it to be and then we're going to use the scraper tool again to make sure that those letters have adhered very very well to the wood because we're going to be painting over these letters and like I said we're using the letters as a stencil so we're going to be painting over them and we want to make sure that they're stuck down well to avoid any bleed through of the paint when we paint over the top. Okay, now what we're going to do is paint over these letters using the same background color. This is one tip that I've picked up uh, along the way of crafting and home decor. When doing these type of stencils and it helps to avoid any bleed through and gives you really, really nice crisp lines, is to once you've got your lettering down paint over them with the same color as the as you want the letters to be so whatever you've painted your base color paint all over these letters making sure you get all over them really well um, in this in the same color and what this actually does is it seals it basically puts a seal on the edge of your letters so that when you're putting the next color on top which will be a completely different color and in my case will be black there's going to be no chance for any bleed through on these letters because this coat of paint what we're putting on now has already dried and sealed those edges and that's why you get such a crisp line and no bleed through it's a brilliant tip it's really really good so if you do intend to do any of these signs definitely don't skip this step okay, so now that that coat has dry now we're going to go in and paint the background so this will basically be the background of your sign and then once we peel off all those letter stickers it will reveal the base coat underneath which is the beige 
So that's going to be the exciting bit is peeling off all the all the letters. I can't wait. So I gave this board at least two coats of the black to make sure it was nice and dark and fully covered. And yeah, once then once the paint I let the paint dry completely because I just didn't want to risk like smudging anything or touching anything or whatever. So I let this um paint dry completely before pulling up my letter stickers. Oh my god, now for the fun part. This I love this part. Okay, so just using my little weeding tool, I'm going to pick up the stickers of the vinyl letters and this is why I say so we're not actually using the vinyl as the design we're just using it as a stencil so um, yeah it's going to reveal those letters underneath how good is that and look how crisp the lines are like no bleed through no nothing it's perfect so oh my god how exciting I'll speed it up so <laughs> you get the nice dramatic effect think back to you. Okay, so to finish off my sign, I'm just going to glue a little border of raw wood around the edges, and I'm just really just sticking this on with some PVA glue. It's the wood's very lightweight; it's not going to be hanging off anything, so PVA glue is more than enough to create a frame. And I'm just gluing it directly to the board. So I've just cut my pieces to length. Or got my husband to cut it because I wasn't going to use that big bloody saw he's got. <laughs> and then I just attached a few clamps over it to set it into place and let it dry overnight. And like I also cut the two side pieces as well, but I don't think I actually got that on film. So it's a complete border. Okay, so we've got my theatre sign here. I must admit, I am absolutely over the moon with how this has turned out. So to finish this off, now I wasn't originally going to do this. I was going to leave the wood raw, but as you can see, when I clamped it, it stained some of the wood and this is not coming off. So what I might do is just do a little bit of a stain on this wood now to darken it up to try and cover up those marks a little bit. If you don't have any actual wood stain, what you can use is just some regular acrylic paint and dilute it in water. And that makes a really good stain to wood. So I've just got here a little bit of this brown. I'll put it in here. Don't need a lot because we haven't got a lot to do. I'm just going to put that amount at the moment and then mix some water so it's a very watery solution. So I'll mix it all up. Okay, so now ideally if I was going to stain this originally, I would have done it before attaching it to the backing clearly. But I mean, it's just a bit of an afterthought now. So we're just going to brush this on. And probably make it a bit darker but we'll just put one coat on and then see how it goes and we can probably add another coat but hopefully this will just help cover up those marks that the um the clamps made so in hindsight i probably should have put some paper towel or something in between the clamp and the wood So yeah, just let that dry now and maybe we'll see if it needs an, an extra coat um, in a little bit. Okay, so here's the finished sign. I am so happy with how that's turned out and there is no way I could get such a professional look to it without the Cricut Joy, definitely. Like my <laughs> hand-painted hand ones don't even come close. So now I'll just show you what it looks like outside the door or on top of the door where it's going. Okay, so there's the entry to our theatre room, in case anyone forgets where it is. <laughs> I'm really, really pleased with how that's turned out. 
all because of the cricket joy how wonderful <laughs> i hope you enjoyed this video guys and i will see you in my next one thanks for watching